As that title card implies, yes, today we're talking The Rise of Skywalker, Star Wars Episode 9. Directed by J.J. Abrams, starring Daisy Ridley, Adam Driver, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac and the late Carrie Fisher. But that is just the tip of the casting iceberg. There's so many little cameos, you know, from the earlier entries and there's a lot of people who, if I said they're in the film, you'd immediately have, you know, it's spoiled that their characters are in the film, of course. And some may argue that's a spoiler, saying that there's people like that, but this is the culmination of nine films worth of media, at least. Not counting all the, you know, series, etc. 42 years of history here in the making to lead up to the end of this saga. And I don't think it's a spoiler telling you that there will be callbacks and nods and cameos and what have you. Just who they are would be a spoiler. So with that out of the way, that clarification, let's move on. So I went with a die-hard Star Wars fan. He's seen pretty much everything. I think he's probably read, you know, external media and stuff like that as well. Big, big fan. Not to my level. You know, I've, I've seen some of the extra material, but not all of it. And, you know, I don't, I don't feel the compulsion to go out straight away and watch it. I could have waited a couple of weeks and gone and seen it. I'd have just been just as happy. But I did go with a hardcore Star Wars fan, and that's helped in a way, I think, because I've gotten my... Not quite just casual general audience. I'm a little further up the chain than that, I think. But I've got two perspectives on it. My own and, and his sort of... His back of the box quote was pretty much... If you've never seen a Star Wars film, you could watch that and you've got the basics of the last 42 years explained to you. It could be a good jumping off point. Come in at the end and then go, right, so what happened to these people leading up? You could use it that way and it wouldn't be awful. And you get the cameo uh, sort of things as you go along. You'd be like, oh, that's why that person was there. And you'd enjoy it. Now, me as a, a general, I'm like, yeah, it was enjoyable. It, it, it capped off the story very well. You know, there are certain things that I will have missed because I haven't delved into the sort of expanded materials, you know, whether they're part of the legacy or the actual now officially accepted canon. But I enjoyed it for what it was. You know, it, it, it did what it needed to for me. I've seen some reviewers saying that, you know, maybe it played it safe and at the end of the day it's a company putting a lot of money on the line here. I don't know off the top of my head, I haven't got the figure to hand of how much this costs, but it's a Star Wars film. It's not going to be pennies. So this is a gamble. This Every film is a gamble, really. But this is a safe bet. So maybe they did play it a bit safer. There could have been, I, I can think of a few things they could have done to be a bit more daring, to be a bit more risky with the investment. But at the end of the day, they don't want a repeat of The Last Jedi. They don't want people saying, let remake it now. You know, I think the general consensus of critics is it might be playing it safe. I think the general consensus of the audience is that worked. I enjoyed it. And that's who it's for. It's not for critics. It's nice to, you know, if you've got good reviews, it helps. But at the end of the day, this is Star Wars. You don't need reviews. You don't need critics giving it five stars before anyone's going to get in there. This is why it can release on a Thursday at midnight and you know you're going to fill out auditoriums. Is, that, is it auditoriums or auditoria? Who knows? If you know, put it in the comments. I think it's ums. But by the by, you know that it's a safe bet. You don't need the support of critics, basically. But there are, you know, there were things that I wasn't, you know, super enamoured with. I don't like how they handled certain things, but other things I, I can't really see a better way. I do think it was a very good decision to bring DJ Abrams back. Um, it really worked. He obviously knew what he wanted to do with The Force Awakens. He knew how he wanted to chart that course. But obviously things didn't happen that way. And... You know, they had a misstep. I, I, I don't hate Ryan Johnson. He's a great filmmaker in his own right. But, you know, I don't think he was right for, for, for the middle film, if you will, you know, The Last Jedi. I don't think it was a good fit. And there were things that I would have improved definitely with that. But this isn't, you know, about hating what's come before. This is about celebrating what's come before. And this film does that. There's brilliant moments, you know, of kind of like, oh, I like what he did there. You know, even me, as I say, not as a hardcore fan, there were little moments I was like going, there's a nice little wink and a nod. And I loved it for that. Now, there is one weird thing that I'll sort of explain a weird thing about me because it is relevant. And I don't know if it is just my biological issue here. 
Best to explain what I'm on about before it gets weirder. I have a lazy right eye. So I don't have true stereoscopy. I've actually seen uh, on a recent eye test. Um, I actually looked into like what the legally blind criterion is, you know, like the 2020 kind of equivalents. And yeah, if both of my eyes were this, I'd be functionally blind. Uh, I could legally register as blind if both of my eyes were as bad as this one. That's how bad it is. But because it's been from a young age, I have learned to fake stereoscopy, uh, if you will, or it's possibly got like enough small amount of data that's coming into it that I can kind of use that and take it further. But I don't consider myself to have true stereoscopy. So you wouldn't expect 3D films to work, yet they do. I think maybe it is just that tiny amount of detail that I can get just is enough for, the, for that effect to work. But there were a few moments, uh, it was mostly the space moments. Um, it tended to be better when you had an actual person as a point of reference. But there were a few moments where it kind of went flat and I had to kind of look around the screen. But that could be just my, my issues with my eyes. So I'd like to know other people's thoughts. I did forget to ask uh, who I was with and I'll probably ask them later on from this recording. But obviously I won't be able to put it in before it goes up. But that is the only thing that I, I definitely had as a, that's not perfect. But then there were some space battles that, you know, I felt TIE fighters and, uh, you know, X-Wings and all the other kind of ships flying around, you know, felt like they were coming sort of past me and things like that. And there were shots with people where it did feel quite flat. So it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't either or. There was kind of some moments on both sides of, of that that were good and some that were bad. But like I say, it might be my eyes. So I'm not going to say that it was wrong and broken. I'm going to say it could be me, but if you've had the same experience and you've got perfect 2020 vision, let me know in the comments below. But to cap off, you know, this was great. You know, there was a lot of threads, a lot of conspiracy theories that were out there, you know, that people were, were throwing up. I mean, the whole situation in The Last Jedi of like your parents were nothing to Ray. You know, we knew that had to be readdressed, you know, unfortunately this time around. And it is, you know, it's not, you know, it, it's gone on record. People, you know, Daisy Ridley herself has said, you know, we're talking about like sort of Raylo, we're handling that and my parentage and things like that. You know, so we do get more information, we get things and, you know, it does work and it does close off these threads a lot more satisfying than, than has come before. And some of the conspiracy theories might be right, some of them might be wrong. You know, again, I'm not going to spoil anything. But I do just really want to finish now with a big hat tip to Ian McDiarmid. I didn't mention him at the start. Uh, but I think he was great. You know, we knew obviously Palpatine was back in some form. I wasn't exactly right with my uh, theory, but I don't think I've ever said what that is on a video on this, so I should be fine. But I wasn't right. Uh, apparently the friend I was with had pretty much hit it on the head, so damn him. But I liked how they did it. And I love the fact that we've had this, you know, sort of character from the, the OG, the original trilogy, come back as a nice sort of connecting thread to finish it off. I think it was a brilliant, you know, idea. And, yeah, like I say, back of the box quote. If you like Star Wars, see it. If you're not sure about Star Wars, see it. If you absolutely hate Star Wars, maybe give it a go. Might turn you around. Who knows? But that's all I can really say without delving into spoiler territory. And like I say, if people want, I can do another one down the line uh, to delve into that a bit more. But that'll be it from me this time. So until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take care. Oh, and may the Force be with you.